Sahara TV. My name is Rudolfo Kungpo. I hope you've been enjoying our show today. Uh, to help us understand what is going on in the country, and uh, there are a lot of issues. We just spoke to the spokesman for the president, uh, Malam Gabashehu. Uh, to help us understand further what's going on in the country, we've invited Pastor Laulu Akonde. He's the editor-in-chief of Empowered Newswire. Pastor Akonde, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you so much, Rudolph, for having me. Okay. So I know you just came back from Nigeria. Yeah. How are things? Well, you know, uh, very, very well. Uh, quite a lot of expectations. Uh, uh, and uh, that's not a surprise. Mm. But is this feeling out there on social media, on regular media, people are writing that it appears as if um, we have another go slow government. In fact, on today's Sahara Reporters, they put up a cartoon depicting the president, Buhari, as a snail that needs to be pushed. And in fact, if you look at the cartoon, it's on your, on your screen, you see uh, Itunde Diabon, uh, former deputy when he was a military ruler, um, pushing him to move. Um, what do you make of the idea that the government is slow in making appointments, in taking decisions? Um, is that? Well, the, 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 the first thing is that uh, we, we shouldn't be surprised that uh, people have this perception uh, of things not moving as they expected. And the reason why I said that is because, of course, uh, President Buhari was voted in in a very massive gale of public, even global, expectations. Uh, I, I, I remember that, uh, you know, sometimes going to Abuja from Lagos in the airport uh, before May 29, somebody was arguing with, with one of the airport security. And the person told the security, say, look, uh, on, on May 29, we will all be equal. You know, there, there, there's a sense of great expectations in the country. Uh, and for me, that explains why people think that uh, not much uh, has been done. Uh, we shouldn't expect miracles. Um, so, so I'm saying that, yes, you know, we have to understand why there is this, uh, uh, this perception. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that uh, we also have to understand that this is how uh, uh, President Buhari plays his politics. He's trying to, he's actually evolving, in my own estimation, as a politician. This is actually his first test of democracy. Uh, yes, of course, he submitted himself to, to, to the ballot, you know, about four times. When he didn't win the three times, he went to court. All of those speak to his democratic uh, credentials without a doubt. But, you know, forming a government, choosing people that he will work with, uh, balancing their interest with his interest, with his own vision, the interest of the party, the interest of the nation, uh, that, for me, is actually Buhari's first major democratic test. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I will give him uh, the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, when he forms the government, uh, I believe that uh, Nigerians will be excited. Mm. Now, w what happened at the National Assembly on Tuesday? How will you describe it? And what, is, what does that say about this new Buhari's uh, government? Again, uh, President Buhari made it very clear that uh, he wasn't going to get uh, too involved in the emergence of the leadership of National Assembly, which I personally think is very commendable. Uh, we've had in the past a situation where the president uh, is, 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 is so engrossed in, in how the National Assembly does its job. So I think we have to give the president a credit for that. What we have seen, however, is uh, uh, what we must call clearly uh, a case of lack of internal discipline within the party. Um, uh, you would expect that the party would have been able to handle itself better so that by the time you go public, uh, there is some kind of consensus. Now, we must commend the party chairman who has come out uh, you know, recently to say that, look, we're going to resolve this matter. So, so there's the issue of uh, building cohesion in the party. But of course, we have to also uh, be concerned that the leadership that has now emerged, you know, uh, is not really uh, an APC leadership. This is a leadership that came in purely by the fact that PDP, you know, threw their weight in. 
Now, a lot has been said as to whether this is moral, whether it was right. I would personally have preferred that uh, Sharaki, you know, uh, allowed the other people to also vote. He probably would still have won if he had those numbers. Uh, so uh, on, on their part, too, it, it looks more of a coup than uh, a democratic uh, outing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the lawyer said that all the rules were met. And, and so uh, I think it's in the interest of the nation for us to, to go forward and, you know, let all the uh, the tensions cool down. You know, I, I hope that they will negotiate uh, some kind of uh, way forward. Mm. Now, um, there, there are so many other news stories uh, coming out of Nigeria. Some of them were denied in a, a few minutes ago when I interviewed uh, Shehu, uh, Gaba Shehu, who, who speaks for the president. One of them was the idea that some people are returning money former government officials who worked with um, Jonathan, they are returning money to, to the government. I asked him, is that legal? If it's happening, what is the legal backing? You know, how do, you, do we let them off if they are returning money? He said he's not aware of that. What do you know about that? Well, you know, as a, as a journalist, I will take the, I will take uh, uh, Governor El Rufai as a very solid source uh, in, in Nigeria's political affairs, even when he was not governor. Uh, even when he was not minister, uh, Rufai knows a lot about what is going on. So, so if Governor Rufai says that this is happening as a reporter, I will pay uh, a lot of uh, attention to it, and I will grant it quite a bit of credibility. Now, uh, I wouldn't expect that um, it would just be a question of return the money and then go. Uh, I guess it, it comes back to the question of the formation of the government. The government has not been really formed as it were. Uh, this will be an issue that the Attorney General of the Federation would have been able to handle properly. And, and so I, I believe that in the, in the next few days or next few weeks, you know, when government would have been properly formed, the Attorney General will be able to answer exactly how this should be done. Uh, I don't think we can make any speculations now that if people are returning the money, then they are allowed to go. I don't think we can make all those judgments yet. Uh, it will eventually have to pass through the due process. All right. We, we said that we want callers to join us in this conversation. Right. So we have a new caller who is trying to join us. So let's talk to him and All see right. what he has to contribute. Hello, caller. Welcome to Sahara TV. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Can you tell us your name and then the question you have or comment? Um, my name is Kane Day, and I'm calling from the state of Tennessee in the U.S. Okay. I have multiple questions. Um, uh, personally, I think that he is moving very slow. I think before the president was sworn in, he should have had someone in mind who is going to occupy at least important minister positions. For example, um, somebody to add the foreign ministry. This um, trip that he's going to in South Africa, this should be for his minister of um, foreign affairs, not for him. He needs to be in a country. He needs to pick his ministers and he needs to get going. He's moving too slow. I mean, we live in a social media era where everything is just fast-paced. He's moving very slow. That's number one. And number two, I also agree that the president hasn't been given a press conference. That's the reason why you're getting separate information from, like, different people saying that this should happen, that should happen, that this is the president was not involved in what's going on with the um, National Assembly, because his press secretary hasn't given a press conference, or even the president himself. He's been traveling all over the place. Yeah, I understand. It's important for him to go to Chad and Niger. But I don't see him going to South Africa. I don't think that's going to help Nigeria in the imminent um, um, situations that we're facing in the country. Okay, Kenny, I will stop you, sorry, because we want to give other people a chance to call, and we have short time for this conversation. We are going to have a full talkback segment, so you can also call back at that time. So, uh, Akande, uh, what is your take on, on his uh, concern? I mean, this is, this is something that changed, I believe him. Social media era. Right. People are not going to wait as long as they waited when Buhari or when Shagari well, was well, there well, the first well. time, and you know, people want to want know. Uh, action and they want it right now. Yeah. Now, I, I, I can tell you uh, with a little, little bit of insight into uh, what is going on, uh, uh, Mr. Femi Adishino, uh, the special advisor, and uh, uh, Madam Shio Gabbard, uh, these are professional colleagues. I can tell you that uh, there's going to be a very robust uh, communication uh, between the people and this government. Uh, they are working around that, and I agree with the last caller that uh, we need to have a, uh, a, a more efficient uh, uh, communication strategy between the president and, 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 and the people. And I think that that is going to be uh, happening. I, I, I have some inside information as to the fact that this is being arranged. 
Uh, it is an area of uh, social media, you know, information at the tip of your fingers. I know that they are making arrangements to begin to respond appropriately to that. And I can assure uh, the caller, based on what I know and the fact that I supported this campaign, that one of the things that the president and the vice president are very concerned about is to release information quickly and to also to be transparent mm -hmm. in all that they do. So I think uh, these things are, 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 are in process, and hopefully uh, it will start to, to germinate uh, very soon. Mm -hmm. Now, let me, let me ask you, talking about information, today we saw in the National newspaper list of names of people who they said are being considered as uh, for the ministerial positions and um, i spoke to shehu gaba gaba shehu i mix it up he yeah. said he said that those are speculations that th there is no list anywhere that he hasn't seen it so so uh, is it an effort to satisfy nigerians who are disappointed that there has not been any news on that ground. Do you think the nation was doing that job? Well, I, I don't think we can say that Nigerians are disappointed uh, so far. But I think that Nigerians are, you know, uh, expressing some kind of desire for some uh, more prompt and fast responses and action from the government. Mm. Um, and so certainly, um, everybody knows that uh, in order for you to form a government, you, you need this, to have the Senate. Sorry, the National Assembly mm. and Senate is going to be the one to, uh, uh, you know, screen mm -hmm. the ministerial list. And you know, the, 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 the Senate just got uh, convoked on Tuesday, so uh, and then they are done the next day. Okay, okay. So uh, you, you have to understand how that process works. So, so the Senate will have to come back, and then the president will present the list to the clerk. You know, uh, and then from where it will, it will become uh, public. Mm. So now, uh, the report in the nation today was that an attempt to uh, to try to give people the impression that uh, things are moving faster than they ought to. I don't know, uh, but I, I I do know that uh, President Buhari is going to pick people that we and we expect him to that we excite the nation. Uh, he's going to pick people that can do the job, mm -hmm. and he's going to pick people that will help him to survive this onslaught of great expectation. Mm -hmm. He alone cannot do the job. Mm -hmm. uh, the president by himself and the vice president, two of them, they are very competent. You know, these are the people that we voted for, but by themselves, they cannot get this job done. Okay. And so hopefully, uh, very soon, you know, we are going to get uh, the list of ministers. I, I, I don't know, you know, if uh, Madame Shio Gaba says that that list doesn't, uh, is not authentic, then, you know, we certainly have to stick by what uh, Madame Shio Gaba says. All right. Then we have a new caller. Let's, let's get a call. Uh, hello. Welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you, Rudolph. How are you doing today? Good, good. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to make a contribution to okay. the discussion Go ahead. going on. Go ahead. Um, I think people who are making comments need to understand the complexity of Nigeria. Nigeria is not United States. Nigeria is unique in its own. Nigeria has, you know, a lot of tribe culture and uh, that needs to be followed politically. In the U.S., somebody from New York can come to Maryland and get a job and be a worker here. But it's not possible in Nigeria. They will tell you, you're not an indigent. So all these things needs to be, on, needs to be understood. And that's the complexity in Nigeria. So they don't expect a government to just come and start running PPP. It's an empty barrel. But when you understand development in engineering, in everything, that is what we call, you know, planning. You need to plan if you want to have a good revolution of development. Nigeria is so complex that if you want to rule that country and you want to be successful, you need to really plan. And I believe that that is what the president is doing. Mm. Because... He just got the report, I mean, the handing over report now. Mm. He needs to sit down and look at it critically and say, look, where do we need to start from? Where is it? Are we going to declare as an emergency? He, really, we know security is an emergency. He has been holding meeting. He had meeting twice with the uh, chief service chiefs. And he doesn't need to rely only on service chiefs because he needs minister of defense and national security advisor. Mm. And to bring somebody on board as national security advisor and the minister of defense or whatever, you need to have the report fully on ground that look, study this. This is a situation on ground. Mm. And you will look at it. Can you do this job for me? 
I believe that's what he's doing. And if you look at it, based on the trust I have for you, can you do this job? If you cannot do it, let me give it to another person to avoid embarrassment. Mm. And I think the president is on course. His movement to G7 in Germany, to AU, to Chad, and all that places, they are on course. They are in place to place Nigeria well because he is getting his grant. And he's, he's already, he has already hit the grass running. Okay. He's all right. Up. All right. I, I have to stop you. Thank you so much. We, we, we got that. Um, let, let's look at the. Uh, this is another question I asked uh, Gaba Shehu about the issue of the vice president right. not being allowed into security meetings, and he said it wasn't true. He gave an example of the first time they report the story came out that they were all they were in Sudan, mm -hmm. that there was no way that the president was traveling with. He was traveling with the president. There was yeah. no way the meeting was happening. Right. The president could not be in two places at the same right. time. Right. So why is, what is pushing these uh, kind of stories out there? Who are the people? Do we have an alternative media? Well, I mean, uh, again, you have to recognize that uh, with the age of the social media and the ease with which people can get information out there, we should expect some, uh, some of uh, such uh, incredible uh, information coming out. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that uh, Mr. Uh, Madam Shilgaba already, uh, uh, you know, addressed the fact that you know this was just a pure rumor. Mm -hmm. This did not happen. As a matter of fact, I can tell you uh, that the relationship between the president and the vice president is very cordial, uh, very mutual. Um, you you saw yesterday a meeting of uh, some of the Chibok uh, mothers. Uh, you know, it was the wife of the vice president that uh, brought the two uh, the two mothers to the wife of the president. And they, they they both went to meet the president. Uh, the president. Mm -hmm. So so these are two people uh, that are very that respect each other, working together. Uh, so I, I suspect that you have people who who should have been removed, you know, uh, as it were, that are trying to. And this is just my own suspicion that are just trying to muddle the water, uh, trying to throw a wrench into into the relationship between the president and the vice president. The, the, uh, the president respects the vice president very much. And the vice president has a huge, I know this personally, the vice president has a huge respect and regard uh, for President Buhari. You know, so uh, th those kind of things is just ridiculous. I suspect that uh, there are other interests that are trying to get this uh, wrong, erroneous information out just to, to muddy the waters. And I think they will fail. Okay. All right. We have a new caller. Let's hear from, from the caller. Hello. Hi there. How's it going? Yeah. Welcome to Sahara TV. Okay. okay. Uh, basically, I think my own take on this is uh, the president is basically damn too slow. He's had more than 16 years to prepare for this uh, task. And now he's actually taking his time. It looks as if he's not really sure what he needs to do. We have uh, all sorts of issues facing Nigeria. Boko Haram is there. You know, the force custody is there. And all of those things. To me, it looks as if he's not really prepared for the job. All right. Thank you so much. Let, let me, I know you can address that later, but let me ask you, um, people agree there, the senatical out there today saying that, for one, the way the media handlers, uh, people handling the media for the president handled the issue of access de declaration yeah. was at the, start, the starting point where they, they kind of failed to, when people were questioning, there was a misunderstanding about what the president said he would do what the practical things uh, they could do, and nobody came on time to present to the people this is why this is this way. Do you think that the people handling his media, that they, they've done enough or a good enough job to, to clear this perception that some of our callers are also pointing uh, out? Now, um, let's, let's, let's be very clear about this. Uh, for the first time, you have a president that has appointed two notable uh, journalists as, uh, as people and then his uh, communication. Now, I think that is significant. I, I think that's an indication of the fact that the president knows the importance of communication. Uh, and the president knows that communicating with the people regarding the change that he is going to prov provide, that communicating with the people is going to be a critical aspect of that change. And so he has brought in two very notable and, 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 and well-prepared uh, uh, journalists and communicators to manage his communication, Mr. Femi Adishino and Madame Shogaba. So we have to understand that, uh, uh, that he has done that, to, 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 to underscore the fact that, look, communication is going to be a big deal, and I recognize that. Now, 
the issue of the asset declaration, what was said, both by, especially by the party uh, and during the campaign, was that in 100 days, the assets will be declared. Now, again, I have, uh, you know, some, some, you know, based on my uh, interaction with, uh, with some of the leaders, I, I know that they had to sign the declaration, they had to do the asset declaration uh, before they took office. And so that was done, and, and the, 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 the communication people wanted the information to, to go out that this aspect of the requirement has been done. Uh, there was never uh, a time when it was said that, look, I mean, this thing is not going to go public, because, of course, you know, the, 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 the president had made it very clear and, and during the campaign that within 100 days. And so, uh, yes, of course, again, because people are very expectant, people want it to be done right now, uh, so they wanted it to be made public day one, which is an option. It is an option to make it public uh, day one. Uh, but, I, but I guess, you know, uh, it was decided that, look, I mean, we have done what is, what is required by law, uh, and then eventually, you know, as time goes, within the 100 days, this is going to go public. So I don't see any problem with the way uh, the communication team manage this. I think it's just uh, a question, again, of the level of expectations that Nigeria expected. And they said, well, well if you release it today to the, to the uh, Code of Conduct Bureau, why don't you release it uh, publicly? Well, it is within 100 days that they said. Okay. And I'm sure that before that time, it will be out. OK, Let, let's take another caller. Hello, welcome to Sahara TV. Hello. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Uh, you have a question or comment? Uh, okay, go, go ahead. Yes, I have a comment here. All right. Uh, my uh, comment is this. Um, this government had come in on the grounds of integrity, and um, a lot of public trust had been put into this uh, government to come in. So, um, actually, I'm actually uh, disappointed because one, if you look at uh, what Gabor Shehu said when the president was in unexpectedly traveled to the United Kingdom, London, he said that he was going for a bed ride so that he could hit the ground running. That was what he said. But if a government that he said he's hitting the ground running cannot even make some basic appointment at the earliest stage of that so then he's busy traveling around, I don't see that the serious government that is hitting the ground uh, running. One. Uh, look at in serious democracy world over when Barack Obama won the elections as early as a month after, uh, as early as a month after he won the election, before he was not great, he had selected Hillary Clinton as his uh, Secretary of State. He had made all his major appointments, Chief of Staff, before he offered because he knew this was going to work. So the longer he is holding on to this appointment shows high level politically, uh, high level politics going on, and he's even going to add more flesh to this suspicion that he's been held hostage by all these men we are hearing in the news, like Timbo and all of them, to make sure that they have a stake or their names have been. Uh, the candidates have been placed in this position. If he had 16 years to run for one office since 2003, I believe he knows what he should be doing. He should have the names. We don't care who he wants to bring in. We believe that he knew everybody that he wanted to work with, and he should just put out the names. Let us know who he wants to work with. Okay, okay. The thank National you. Assembly, the leadership. Sure. Udo, Udo, thank you so much. We are really out of time. So um, Yeah, I'd like ahead. to respond to that and yeah. the, the earlier caller, too, regarding uh, what the president has been doing. Look, we, we have to understand that since he took over uh, power, President uh, uh, Buhari has been focusing most especially on the question of uh, the insurgency in the Northeast. As a matter of fact, if you listen to how the, the, the service chiefs are, are, are talking now, you will see that already we have a change in perception, we have a change in direction of how this war against uh, Boko Haram is going to be fought. So very clearly, there is progress in that area. Very clearly, uh, there is better organization, even in terms of the response from the international community. The G7 leaders, you know, uh, met with uh, President Buhari last week, and they told him that, look, we want to work with you, we want to help you. And he announced also that they told him to go and bring his list. So he, he has been focused on that and other issues. Now, the inability to announce a team uh, so far is not so much uh, we, we, we shouldn't see that as, as, as a failure, because it is not a failure. It is the, 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 the unique nature of the Nigerian political scene. I can bet that uh, uh, President Buhari knows the people that he wants to work with, 
but he has to balance that uh, with the political realities. There are some political realities in Nigeria that don't exist in America. You know, there are no north and south dichotomy in America. There are no intensive uh, religious differences. Now, these are some of the issues, especially the ethnic factor, that has to be balanced. You know, so, so I, I think we should give the president uh, that benefit of the doubt uh, uh, to, to put everything together to make sure that everybody is, is, uh, is catered for. I know that the man knows what he wants to do. He campaigned on what he wants to do. He has the perception. He has the, sorry, he has the vision for it. Uh, with a little bit of time, he will announce uh, the people he wants to work with. And, uh, you know, but I think he wants to carry everybody along, which I think is commendable. Mm. All right. Yeah, because we're running out of time, I want to give you the chance to tell us, um, is there other things going on that we are not seeing? Uh, it's not in the media. You are editor-in-chief of Empowered News. What are people, what is going on behind the scene that we don't know about? Well, uh, for instance, you know, there is a very uh, uh, considerable uh, effort in, in in trying to figure out who should be in what position. That's it, right? that, you know that that is not seen. Uh, the, the the hard work that is involved in selecting a team that one is not seen. Mm. Uh, the 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 the, uh, the realization of the sensitive sensitivity of some of these appointments that is not seen. And you know I, I don't think it is it is it, it is meant to be seen anyway. Uh, the important thing is to be able to bring together a team that is comp competent, efficient, and that reflects Nigeria. And I believe that that, that is what is going to happen. A lot of the, 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 the stuff going behind the scene, we don't see it, but no, they are no. very good, actually. The people that went with him to Germany, you yeah. have Fashola, you have Fayemi. Uh, what does that say? Can we read? No, I don't think Fayemi was with him. No, Fayemi went ahead of, uh, ahead of him. Oh, OK. Yeah. Okay. So can we read anything into those, those names? I, I, as a reporter, just like uh, you know, the two of us, are certainly how we read uh, meanings to that as a reporter, mm. uh, General Dambaza was also there. Yeah. Uh, so that, that might uh, be. And that might be an indication. At least that means that those are the people that are helping him regarding that particular trip. Mm. And I think it would be a wonderful thing uh, to have uh, somebody like Fashola in government, mm. uh, somebody like Dambazao for sure. Now, now uh, the nation today published names, and the new name I've seen, I mean, uh, 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 Obi Ezekwesele. I know that you know Obi. Is she interested? Is she going to be part of this government? Well, um, I'll say this. I, 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 I wish that uh, uh, Obi Ezekwesele, who is my sister, I wish she is part of this government. Now, I don't know whether she is interested or not. Now, don't forget that Obi Ezekwesele is one of the few people who have served in government in Nigeria and left, you know, uh, by their own uh, determination. You know, when she left to come to the World Bank, you know, uh, she, she had to, to she tell, she told the president, I'm going. And there have been efforts after that by former President Jonathan twice to bring her back to government. And she said no. <laughs> she, she actually said that, look, I mean, I don't have to be in government. You know, so, so I'll be somebody, she's obviously somebody who has that uh, uh, level of uh, uh, understanding and, you know, self-confidence. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I wish, I wish that uh, somebody like Obi Ezekwesele uh, should be in this government because this government is going to be about reform. And we know uh, Madame Du Process is very good with reform. Okay, one last question. Uh, among the people that left uh, the former uh, government, we have people like um, Ngozi Okonjiwala right. and Desiane Alison Madeke. Right. Now, how do you think Ngozi is, um, is going to um, d deal with the issue around uh, the, the questions about missing money? Because the, the president, the current president, is still going to look into the, uh, what happened with the oil, the, yeah. the oil money, and right. what is what's going on with the two and their reputation, and where do they go from? Right. I know that you have inside stuff. Give us something. I mean, I, thank you for asking that question. I, I, I want to say that uh, Yale University did a very bad job uh, deciding to to honor uh, uh, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo at this time. Now, that, that doesn't represent Yale University for the excellence with which we know Yale University, for the global acclaim with which we know Yale University. It's, it's, it's the wrong time to, to honor Okonjo Iweala. You know, uh, uh, it, it shows that those involved in this process on behalf of Yale, they are insensitive or they are ignorant. 
there is no way that you're going to dice up the, 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 the economic status of Nigeria when Okunjo Iwila is leaving and give Okunjo Iwila a, 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 a passing credit. Uh, the, the kind of expectation that we had when Okunjo Iwila was joining the government, you know, uh, compared to how she has left the government, is very disheartening. Uh, you know, are you going to talk about the fact that we are now spending over 20 percent of our income on debt servicing? This was the same person that came in to reduce the debt. Are you going to talk about the devaluation of the Naira, you know, under our watch? Not to talk of all these missing monies and all this kind of uh, uh, scandal around this fuel subsidy. So um, I think that Okonjo Iweala will have has a lot of explaining to do and not even uh, in terms of being accused legally of anything, but in terms of the fact that she never delivered on the hope and the expectation that were uh, expected, you know, especially by Nigerians abroad, uh, Nigerians in the diaspora, who were excited when she was appointed, mm -hmm. including my very self. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have been very disappointed in, mm -hmm. in, in, in what she did. Now, uh, what is she going to do? Well, I mean, uh, I'm sure that she's going to be available to answer questions. The same thing with, uh, uh, with, with uh, Mrs. Uh, Dezani, you know, uh, they will be available. Dezani has said that she never stole any money, that nobody should call her a thief because she didn't steal. And, uh, you know, hopefully that will pan out. Mm -hmm. Now, you are very correct, and I think that the government will have to, you know, get to the bottom of some of these scandals for the good of Nigeria. And, and also for to, to clear the names of some of these people. Mm. All right, uh, we are out of time totally. Thank you so much, Lola Akande, for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Rudolph. All right, when we come back, we are going to get youth panel. Some young people will come here and discuss some of these issues from the perspective of the young. So stay tuned. And just remember, we have several other interviews and guests who are coming on the show. So keep watching. <laughs>